Thank you for participating today. We will now begin with an opening statement from head coach Will Wade and then go to questions. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you're called on, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach, please give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go right to questions. Yeah, I thought it was a great game, high level game. Um, the game got away from us, I think, at the end of the first half. We had a pretty good work and margin. We got off to a great start and had a great work and margin. And then, you know, to be down, uh, be down one at half, uh, we went on a scoring drought there for four or five minutes. And we got the lead uh, in the second half by six. And they made some huge threes. We just had some poor closeouts, some poor switches below the ball. And we weren't able to overcome them. But our guys played hard. Our guys gave it all they had. I'm proud of them for. For um, for everything they've they've accomplished this year and and and, and fighting through the season. And we will go to questions from the media. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. Our first question is from Kevin McCaskill Jr. FP Sports. Yes, Kevin McCaskill Jr. FP Sports, Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, why didn't Josh Gray play tonight? Well, we just felt like we needed to keep keep the floor spaced and having days in there and days didn't get in a ton of foul trouble till the end. And um, you know, Dickinson didn't he didn't hurt us as bad as we as we were um, expecting down there. Our doubles were pretty good, so just was in the flow of the game. It wasn't one of those games where we we felt like um, we needed him right now. Yeah, can I ask one follow up? He's a he's like a real big energy guy though. He, he can give you a lot on the offensive rebounding. Um, just no, you didn't have any thought to play him tonight? No, we thought maybe going into the game we were going to play him, but just with the flow of the game, um, it, didn't, uh, it didn't work out that way. Our next question is from Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV. Will, you mentioned it, just the game getting away from you. Uh, do you think it was a little bit of you know, running out of gas? You all played so well in the first half and the inability to sustain it. And then their ability to, I guess, affect, sh affect shots at the rim also seemed to, you know, let y'all settle for some perimeter shots. Yeah, I think you know we played we played two guys forty minutes. I thought at the you know their run coincided with us having those guys out there a long time at the end of the first half, um, and then you know in the second half we kind of ran out of gas the last ten minutes. Um, so I do think probably that had um, that had something to do with it. Next question is from Glenn West. Hey, well, uh, Glenn West with LSU Country here. Just, uh, you know, talk about Javante's game. I mean, he really seemed to carry you guys in that second half. And even when you got down a little bit, you know, you, he just really seemed to be a, a force for you guys throughout the entire night. Just just talk about, you know, his performance and, you know, just how, how he's able to keep you guys in the game there. Yeah, I mean, he he's, he stepped up and, and played great. I mean, he was he was tremendous, especially in the second half. He made plays. I think he had six, seven assists, one turnover. Um, you know, he, he did a he did a great job controlling the game, controlling our team, and he was uh, you know he was he was phenomenal. So um, very very uh, very very proud of him, and he just capped off a, a great season. Next question is from Sheldon Nichols. Hey, well, you mentioned the uh, the game got away in, at the end of the first half, but in the second half, you kind of regrouped. You had a six point lead, but about fifteen and a half minutes ago, what what happened in those next ten minutes that kind of got away from you there? Well, we just couldn't ever, you know, we couldn't string together enough enough stops uh, to uh, we, we could just never string together enough stops to to make a run and to and to, and to make it. Um, you know, to expand our lead. We could never get the lead above 10 in the first half. Second half, you know, after we got the six-point lead, we gave up a couple threes. We missed a floater in the lane. We just – we could never um, sustain what we were uh, what we were doing. Next question is from Scott Rabelais, the Baton Rouge Advocate. Well, um, people said Michigan looked a little vulnerable maybe because they were missing Livers, one of their best players. But – they outscored you 26 to two off the bench. Is, is that something that's kind of indicative of this game? Was that something you were worried about that they just come at you and come at you with a lot of players? Yeah. I mean, Shondi Brown's a great player. We knew that. And um, I mean, they're a great team. They're, they're a tremendous, tremendous team. Coach Howard and their staff, their offensive execution, the way they move, the way they, 
the way they guard, um, they're they're a very very good team. They're going to be an extremely tough out uh, for, uh, for for anybody. Our next question is from Billy Embody, twenty four seven Sports. Hey, Will, um, what will you remember most about this season? You know, Ed Orgeron talked about what he took away from it, just you know, going through all the protocols and everything. What what are you going to look back and, and take away from it? Just how hard our guys fought. I mean, we went through we went through so much, um, so much, so many things on and off the court. Just how hard they fought to get in. I mean, we got in twenty nine games. Um, just to get in the twenty nine games, man. Every day was was a was a battle, and these kids battled, 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 and wanted to play, and 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 wanted to be great. And um, you know, we started peaking at the right time. We just you know just happens you get a, a a tough draw and a great team like this it's a high level game and it can go either way and they just made a few more shots and a few more plays than we did but our guys our guys really really battled all season and I told them I I, I told them how much I appreciate that you know in the locker room after the game our next question is from Ron Higgins yeah well uh did did, did Michigan show on the film they could shoot the three that well I, in the second half it seemed like when they hit those two threes in a row, and every time you came up with a basket, they answered with a three. Uh, did they they show on film they could shoot the three ball that well? Well, yeah. They, I mean, they, they lead the Big Ten in three point shooting. Um, but I mean, you can't take away everything, and we've kind of lived and died by giving up some threes all year. And um, you know, we, we we had to we had to give something up to take away take away the points in the paint to take away everything in the post and. That's what we did, but the threes they hit on the runs were off the really weren't inside out threes. They were they were off the off the bounce threes, poor switch outs, things of that nature. So that was stuff that we can control that we just we didn't do a we didn't do a, a, a good enough job on. Our next question is from Sheldon Nichols. Hey, Will, uh, it looks like y'all y'all did a pretty good job on Dickinson in the first half. You could look like you frustrated him a little bit. Um, did you feel good about that that matchup at halftime that y'all had you know switched players a lot defenders? Yeah, I thought we, I thought we did a good job trapping him, confusing him down there, making him work. Uh, we had active hands, and then when we got tired, they they just got way too comfortable. I think they had 13 assists on 16 made baskets. The problem in the first half was our closeouts, them driving our closeouts, and we just did a did a did a did a poor job with that. Next question is from Paul Boron. Hi, Coach. Paul Warren from Cox Sports Television. I know a couple times this season you talked about, you know, this is a team I expected to see, and then you ha would have some lulls. Do you feel like tonight you went out kind of given your best shot and, and the best of what your team could be? Yeah, I think we went out, you know, we, we, we played well. We ran into a great, great team. It wasn't like, I mean, we could have done some things differently. We could have, you know, we made a few more shots, made a few more of our, finished a few more in the lane, made a few better switches defensively. We certainly could have won the game, but I can't fault our guys' effort and how hard they played, and we were prepared and ready to go. We just, we couldn't sustain it for 40 minutes. Our final question is from Michael Cobble. Well, this is likely going to be the uh, final game, obviously, that this group plays together. But for some of your star players, uh, I guess just could you talk about the future of LSU basketball as you see it and um, maybe some of the plans of how you how you start the process of moving forward? I mean, we've you know, we've certainly going to lose, you know, some some very, very good players. We've got some talented young kids um, in the program that we feel really good about. We're going to. Um, try to try to mix in some veteran guys here in the spring. Have two or three scholarships to to mess around with and, and, and get some talented veteran guys to to join our young core. Um, that's really that's really really good. So we've got to keep the young core together. Keep go, keep those guys together. Keep, get those guys in the gym and get back to work and add a couple veteran pieces. And I think we can be be, be right back where we where we are tonight. Thanks, Will. Right. Thank, Thank you, Coach, for your time today. We'll be joined momentarily by Javante Smart. Thank you all.
We are now joined by Javante Smart. We'll begin the press conference. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. And when you're called on, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question is from Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV. Hey, Javante, Michael Cobble here in Baton Rouge. Um, you know, results notwithstanding, how, how exciting was that uh, game, especially in the first half, to be a part of? And do you feel like the energy you expended in that first half, you know, y'all just couldn't sustain it in the second half to, to pull out the victory? Um, you know, coming into the game, um, we knew it was a big game. You know, playing against Michigan um, on one of the biggest stages, you know, you, you, you want to play in. Um, you know, I just want to give it all to Michigan. You know, they came to fight. Um, we came to fight. Um, but our energy wore off. Um, I thought we should have, you know, just kept our energy, kept going. But, you know, during the game, energy wore off. And, you know, we just, it just outplayed us at the end. Our next question is from Glenn West. Hey, Javante, um, it's Glenn West here with LSU Country. Um, so, you know, what point, you know, I guess in the second half did the offense really just kind of seemed to, to stagnate? It seemed like there was a lot of ISO ball going on, and you guys have had success with that this season. But, you know, I guess just kind of what at what point did you guys feel like maybe that it was starting to get away from you a little bit, and, and, and how did you try to rectify it at least uh, throughout the end of that game? Yeah, um, during the middle um, of the second half, uh, we felt like, you know, we was doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one ball. But you know, all year that's what you know. That's what we we you know we we've been doing all year. So we just try to you know pass the ball to each other. You know, play as a team. You know, continue to play as a team. You know, hit some shots, but you know they hit some big shots. And they hit a couple of big shots, and you know we was just trying to get some stops. Really, just really on the defensive end, trying to get stops because we knew we was going to score the ball. We just needed to get stops. This question is from Sheldon Nichols. Hey, Javante, Sheldon Mickelson, the advocate. It, it seemed like in the middle of the second half, they start, I think they hit nine out of 10 shots and y'all started missing. Did, did you feel like y'all started pressing when they started hitting a few uh, or did y'all uh, just kind of hit a rut there? Yeah, um, you know, we wanted to press them early. Um, you know, in the Big Ten, they wasn't pressing that much. So Coach told us we was going to start out pressing. Um, you know, they hit some big shots, like I said, and. You know, we wanted to speed the game up, and they were still hitting some big shots, and we came down and hit, um, missed a few shots. But, you know, that happens in the game. We just wanted to keep fighting hard, and, you know, the outcome, we took an L, but take that to the chair. Our next question is from Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV. Javante, um, you know, you came back for a reason this season, and, and clearly, you know, you showed tonight you're capable of you know, leading the team, I guess, just if you could big picture it for me for a moment and talk about what this season has meant to you and playing through all the difficulties, you know, just to get to this point. And do you feel like you made the right decision in hindsight now? Yeah, I feel like coming back, you know, talking to my, my, my mom and, you know, coaches, I feel like coming back would, would be the best thing for me, um, just learning more. Um, I feel like this year it helped me learn a lot more, you know, about myself and about, you know, just growing up as a man. I think um, this year was, you know, one of the biggest years, you know, you can ask for. Um, playing during COVID, you know, it's hard. I had to set out a few games. It's just a lot a lot that was going on, and I think that it helped me, you know, for further on. And I think I think it was a real good year. And, you know, I'm proud, proud of our guys, um, our younger guys, and even, you know, Trenton and Days, you know. Like I said, it was a big year for us. and. I was looking forward to, you know, winning it all, but we fell short to Michigan. And like I said, I want to give it all to them, but I feel like I learned a lot this year. Next question is from Billy Embody, 247 Sports. Hey, Javante, uh, Billy Embody with 247 Sports. When you uh, look back on what you and Trendon and, and Darius and, you know, I guess to an extent Cam have accomplished together. I mean, how close are you guys and, and what, like what's your relationship? How, how, how have you guys grown together uh, since you guys have been, you know, on campus here? Yeah, um, me and Days came in together, but me and Trendon, you know, we, we always together. Um, you know, that's my guy. Um, we were roommates. Um, you know, we was always working out together, but um, Cam came along. You know, Cam was kind of quiet, but you know, he came along, he came, you know, he's not as friendly 
as other guys, but, you know, Cam came along and, you know, was interacting with other guys. Because we all, all four of us are roommates, so you really have no choice but to, you know, interact with each other. Next question is Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV. Hey, man. Um, how difficult was it going in the second half to, to get your shot inside? It seemed like, um, you know, their height started to affect uh, – affect y'all's shot selection at some point. Said it again? It seemed like um, they were able to, to redirect your offense, you know, and you guys had to look for outside shots. Was their height a significant factor because of that in the second half, or was that just kind of the looks you were getting? Yeah, I think um, I think that was just the shots, um, you know, we was getting. I think um, with all the guys, we have a lot of shot makers. I, I think – you know, the open shots was there, and we take them because, you know, we make them most of the time. But, you know, they just wasn't falling. So I think we started attacking a little bit and starting to open everything up for the three-point line and inside. Our next question is from Kevin McCaskill, Jr., FP Sports. Kevin McCaskill, Jr., FP Sports out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, when the first cancellations happened during the season, did you question if the season would continue? Yeah, I did, because um, I didn't know how how the season would go. With I didn't know how the season would go with with all the COVID things, and because I had COVID um, during the season, and you know I had to sit out, and I didn't know how it was going to continue. But um, I want to give it all to you know the NCAA for being able to have this. Thank you, man. No problem. Thank you, Javante, for your time. No problem. Thank you. That's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports you, at NCAA.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at NCAA.veritone.com. Thank you all for joining us.